In this second video, we're going to learn how to calculate our mean and standard deviation and then use those, uh, the, these statistical measurements and this information to actually graph our data and to take a look at uh, our data and, and kind of analyze it a little bit more. So what I have here set up is this is data table 2 from our potato uh, membrane diffusion lab. And I've got for our different trials and for each of our different molarities, I have the percent change. So this would have been one group, uh, group one, trial one. And this is their percent change for all of the different molarity concentrations from distilled water at zero to full uh, one, one molar change. Uh, and then it goes through the nine different groups. And I want to calculate the mean and the standard deviation of these different values. And so to do that, Excel will actually do this for us very easily and very quickly. And again, we're going to be using an equation. So I'm going to type equals. And the mean is just the average. And Excel already has this equation built into it um, because it's one that's used pretty frequently. And so if you start typing average, A, B, you see that it already pops up right here. It says average. So I'm going to click on that. And now it's asking for some numbers in between these two parentheses. So it wants us to highlight uh, a set of numbers that we wanted to calculate the average or the mean for. So I'm going to highlight this first column here that is 0.0, .0 molar. So I've highlighted B, column B, number 3 through 11, and it shows that right here. And next I'm going to press Enter. And this is the average for 0, 0.0 molar. So for all of our trials, our average is 12%. Now, as we learned in the last video, I don't have to do that for all of these. I can actually just have Excel copy that formula for all of them. So if I move my cursor to the bottom right hand of, uh, corner of this cell, my cursor changes to a black cross sign. So I'm going to click once with my mouse and drag that across all the way to 1.0 molar. And that's going to then calculate the average or the mean for all of these different values. Let's check one of these. Let's check 0.6 molar just to make sure if I click on this. If I look up here in my formula bar, if I click on it, it'll show us what's being highlighted, what's being calculated. It says the average of E3 to E11. E3 to E11, that's what I want it to do. And so that average is a negative 23%. That means that that potato is actually losing mass. So again, this is the percent change in mass, so a negative number is going to represent that that potato is losing mass. Next, we need to do standard deviation, and this is just as basically as easily as calculating the mean. We're going to insert an equation again, so I'm going to press equals. And I'm going to write standard. And you'll notice it already starts pulling up some different options. When we're calculating standard deviation, we want to use the STDEV equation. So I'm going to click that. And I'm going to highlight our group of uh, samples, or our, our numbers here. I'm going to highlight this row, B3 to B11, and press Enter. And there it calculates our standard deviation for us. I only have to do that once for this one cell. I can now click on this box like I did for the mean, drag it over, and all of our mean and standard deviation is calculated for us just like that. So now that we have our mean and our standard deviation, our next step is to actually take this information and graph it. And in order to do that, I need to uh, change how our data table is set up a little bit, or I need to make a new data table. So I'm going to do that right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is in a column, I'm going to put our uh, molarity of sucrose sugar. So we have 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8, and 1.0. I need to add an M to this. Let's make this column a little bit bigger here. And the next one I want to add the percent, excuse me, mean percent change in mass of solutions. By setting up this little data table right here and actually taking the time to label um, our information really well, it's going to make making our graph easier. And I need to actually add units to this, so I'll do that. This was in, gr uh, no, I guess I don't need to do that since it's just percent. And so to get our mean values here, uh, I can actually have Excel do this pretty easily for me. So I'm going to type equals and just click on the box that I want, which would be 12% for zero molarity. Press enter. And do the same for rest, the rest of these. Um, unfortunately, because it's not in a vertical 
column. The mean right here is not in a vertical column. It won't, you can't do the drag feature. It won't, it won't work for this. So I've got these values here set up. I've got my molarity and my mean percent change uh, in mass of solutions. I think we actually should add units here. So we've got plus or minus, plus or minus 0 0.1 grams. So now I want to turn this into a graph. And to do that, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. To do that, I'm going to highlight all of this information, these two A and B columns, and then the rows 17 through 23. I'm going to highlight those. And then if I look up above on my toolbar, right up here, there's a tab that says Charts. I'm going to click on Charts. And I want to use something called a scatter plot. So I'm going to hit this little down arrow, and I want a marked scatter plot. This is what we're going to use. And if I click that, it'll insert the chart for us nicely. And you can see it's already got our title here, which is really nice. Um, it's got our horizontal or excuse me, our horizontal values right here, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. These are different molarities. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. There we go. Make that a little bit bigger. And I'm actually going to delete this series name. We only have one series. We only have one group of data on here. So they're all the same, and it's, it's being displayed uh, in the title. So I'm going to delete this. And to do that, I'm just going to click on it and then click the Delete button. And that will free up some more space and, and give us some more space on our graph here. Um, the first thing that I want to do is add something called a trend line. And a trend line is going to uh, provide us uh, a line that goes through the data points to some degree and help us get a better idea of how related or how connected they are or how correlated they are. We've talked about correlations. This is actually going to be a correlation line, and we can measure that correlation. So to do that, I'm going to click on my data points here. And I want to right click on these data points. So again, that's two fingers at the same time clicking on my mouse. And if I do that, I'll see I can add a trend line. I want to click that. And I want this trend line to be linear. And if I go over here on the left hand side to the menu bar, there's options. I want to click options. And I want to display the R squared value on the chart. I'm going to click that box and press OK. So what this is doing for us is this has got our trend line, this black line, and the R squared value, this is the value that's telling us how correlated the value uh, our data is. And so if you remember we talked about correlations ranging on a scale from 0 to 1, 1 being very correlated, 0 being not very correlated. And so although this is a pretty small sample size and, and in most situations we probably want more, uh, a greater number of samples, we have an R value, R squared value of 0.845. So this is a pretty strong correlation in this point. Um, and uh, that's just some good information to have. The second thing that we want to do is to actually add in some uh, a measurement or a degree of, of how much error we have in these different data points. And to do that, uh, I've clicked on and I've highlighted. You can see all these data points are highlighted. And I'm going to right click, so two fingers at the same time on the mouse keyboard. And I'm going to go to Format Data Series. And I want to select on our menu bar here uh, this one right here, and instead of the X bars, I want the Y bars, and I want to have them be displayed on both ends. And we're actually going to do a custom value, and this custom value is going to be our standard deviation, and we need to specify that. So I'm going to click Specify Value, and it gives us a value for the positive and the negative. We're going to use the standard deviation on both ends, and so to select that, since we've already calculated it, I'm going to click this button right here. This will allow us to select a specific area on our spreadsheet. So I'm going to click this and then highlight the standard deviation for our different values. This would be 0 molarity, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0. So I'm going to highlight these just like that and then press enter. And I want to do the same thing for the negative. Press enter and then press OK press OK. And we'll see that our values now have some different uh, degrees here. Uh, this one molarity has a rather high standard deviation, so that would signify that there's probably a high degree of error in that measurement. Whereas our zero uh, molar 
has a smaller, our 0 0.2 is looking really well. And so by having these bars here, we can actually see um, what degree of error we have in each of these different measurements. And so here's our, our graph. Uh, this is the graph for all of our data. Um, in this activity, you're going to be asked to create a graph just for your data as well as for everybody's, uh, for the means and the standard deviations and having all this information. We probably want to clean this graph up a little bit. I want to move the title, but I want to move this R squared value a little bit here. Move this down so it's easier to see. Um, the other thing that we would need to do is add a, a label or a title for our Y axis. Um, for our X axis, we want to add that as well. And to actually make those changes, you can go up in your toolbar to chart layout, and there's some options for adding axis titles. So you're going to want to add access titles for both of these. Uh, when you print out or when you are ready to save your, your chart, uh, the ones that you want to actually print out would be the graph, as well as this data table. This would be data table 2 that you've calculated, as well as data table 1, which we did previously in the other video. You're obviously welcome to write these into your worksheet, but I think actually printing them out will be a little bit better and will allow you to see the information a little bit more clearly. Um, and in the future, we'll continue to use Excel and kind of build on what we've talked about here, but this is some of the basics that we've covered so far.